Let's work through another one. Uh, let's keep on the pirate theme and do a projectile motion problem. So we have a cannonball that is going to be fired from the deck of this uh, pirate ship. <clears throat> and so this here is our object, which we'll take to be a point object. Uh, it is being fired at an angle that is 21 degrees above the horizontal and being fired at an initial launch speed of 170 meters per second. So for this problem, I want to find out everything, meaning that when I look at this, it's going to have a trajectory that's going to be parabolic. So it's going to uh, travel like this before eventually splashing down in the water. Uh, the first thing is that there's going to be some point where it is at a maximum height above the water. And so I want to know what that maximum height is. I want to know uh, when it eventually comes down and hits the surface of the water, I'll call that point B. I want to know how fast it's moving at that point. I want to know how far it has traveled horizontally. Uh, and I want to know how much time this entire trajectory takes. So uh, starting every sort of problem, first off, it always helps to have some picture, uh, even if you don't have my awesome art skills. Next uh, is we have to set up a coordinate system, and we always have the choice of where to put our coordinate system. Now, uh, for a lot of problems, it's sort of fairly obvious that we're going to put, say, our origin at uh, ground level. Here we don't have ground, but as you can tell by the blue wavy line, uh, we have the surface of water. So one option would be setting that as our um, as our origin for the coordinate system, uh, but we are also uh, starting at some distance above the water, and we can honestly put uh, the coordinate system wherever we like. And so, just to be fun, let's say that I'm going to put my coordinate system such that uh, my object is going to start off at the origin, meaning that I'm going to choose to set things up so that its coordinates x0 is equal to 0, and y0 is equal to 0. So that's where it's starting off. That does mean that when it eventually comes and hits the water, it's going to be below that level. Uh, in other words, my y final is going to be equal to negative 4.3 meters. Now, uh, we didn't have to use it this way. We could have chosen a different point, say, this point here on the surface of the water to be our origin, in which case we would have let our y final be equal to zero and our y initial be equal to positive 4.3. Uh, no matter what we choose, we should still get the same answer. So, um, so having defined this coordinate system, notice we've started to write down what some of our variables are. So let's sketch a few more on here. Uh, if our, uh, object is starting off at x0 equals 0, we have some x final over here, uh, or in general, just have some displacement in the x direction, which I'll call delta x. So that's going to be my total horizontal motion, or what we sometimes call the range. Now, uh, when we are uh, looking at this problem, notice that we were given this 170 meters per second at 21 degrees above the horizontal. So that 170 is equal to our launch speed. Let me call that V0. So that's going to be a scalar number that just gives me the magnitude of my initial velocity. And then I have my launch angle, which I'll call theta0. And that is equal to 21 degrees. So together, they give me my initial velocity, 170 meters per second at 21 degrees above the horizontal. Now, when we go through and work through this, we are going to do everything in terms of the x and y components, which means that if we were to come and redraw our vector over here, so if this is 170 and this is 21, we have x components and y component vectors that we'll call vx, this I'll call vy0. Remember for uh, projectile motion, we only have an acceleration in the y direction, vertically, uh, and so, and we have no acceleration horizontally, so whatever vx I get over here, I'm going to keep throughout that entire motion, 
However, my Vy will change as it goes up and then comes back down again. Because we've defined this angle relative to the horizontal uh, and we have the magnitude here, then uh, we can use uh, trig to write down our components. We get that our Vx will be equal to V0 times the cosine of theta zero, so 170 times the cosine of 21. That gives me 158.7 meters per second. I'm gonna keep a, some extra significant figures here for my intermediate values. Then my Vy zero will be V zero times the sine of theta zero, and that gives me uh, 60.9 0.9 meters per second. And both of these are going to be positive because it is pointing in the positive x and the positive y direction. So we've uh, already started to define some of the quantities. And for any type of kinematics problem, whether one dimensional or two dimensional, uh, we have a number of different quantities that are known. We have a number of different quantities that are unknown. And then uh, we have a set of equations that allow us to relate them. <clears throat> so um, we are being asked to find two things, um, one about the motion of point A, another one at the motion of point B. At point A, we want to find this height above the water. So I'm going to treat that as its own problem for a moment. So forget about the rest and just say that I want to know at what height above the surface of the water uh, we're going to find that projectile at its maximum height. So um, just to sort of regather all of our information, uh, we have a number of different variables that define projectile motion. We had our x0, we had our y0, we have our vx, we have our vy initial, we have a vy final, uh, we have an y final, we have an X final and we have time, how long it takes to get there. So uh, for any projectile motion problem, no matter what type, we always have eight different variables that we can possibly have values for. So, um, and so for otherwise not sure where to start a given projectile motion problem or kinematics in general, I'm just gonna write down all the variables that can possibly appear in my equations. Uh, and I'm going to start plugging in some of these values. I've chosen that x0 and y0 are equal to 0. I didn't leave myself enough space here. This is 158.7. This is equal to 60.9. And uh, if we go through the rest of these, notice that uh, I'm not told how much time that takes. So that's going to be an unknown in my problem. Uh, where it is horizontally at that point, that would be this distance here call that x sub a. Uh, that is also unknown. Uh, and then the y sub f, which above I called y sub a, um, even though I gave it a different variable name, it is still something unknown. So already I have three different unknowns that I'm trying to find. However, uh, we're told that this point a was occurring when it was at its maximum height. It was at the apex of the trajectory. Uh, and what is true when an object is at the apex of the trajectory uh, is that that's the point where it has stopped moving up and will start moving down again. Uh, and that's defined by saying y, v sub y is equal to zero. So the maximum height of anything is always going to have vy equal to zero. So this means that if I'm looking at point A as my final point, then I have vy final is equal to zero. So. I have one, two, three, four, five uh, known quantities. I have three unknown quantities. Now I can go through and look at my equations, my kinematic equations, uh, to see what is going to help me. So if I'm trying to find my y final, notice that we have an equation that contains y final. Um, that's our y position equation. It says y final is equal to y initial plus v y initial times t minus one half g t squared. So that's our position equation for projectile motion. Notice that, well, I know the y zero, that's equal to zero. I know my v y zero, that's equal to 60.9. I know g is equal to 9.8. 
uh, but what is unknown is time. So I uh, cannot use this expression to find directly. I, I would need to find the time first. If I were to go and look at my other equations, um, another equation I have uh, involves my velocity. I have vy final is equal to vy initial minus g times e. And now if we look at this, we'll notice that. Well, I know my vy final because we're defined it to be zero at this point. I know my vy initial, and of course I know g. And so what I could do is find this time t. In other words, I can just start plugging the numbers, solve that value, and then plug it back into this expression up here. And that would give me the final position. That gives me my y final. However, um, if we were to keep looking at our set of equations, it might be nice to uh, be able to find what we're looking for without having to go to two different equations. And in fact, if we look at our last one, our velocity displacement equation, we have vy final squared is equal to vy initial squared minus 2 times g times delta y. Delta y is y final minus y initial. And again, if we look at this expression here, I know what y final is. That's equal to 0. I know my vy initial. I know g. I know my y initial. We set that equal to 0. And so now, just using one single equation, I can solve for my y final. Both of these methods will give you the exact same answer, because in essence, that's how we got this third equation. We got it by taking this one, solving it for time, plugging it in, and just moving terms around. So whichever method is going to work best for you, whether you want to do it in one step and then do some algebra to rearrange it, or to do the two steps. And depending on the problem, you know, maybe if you need time for something else, you might want to do it that way. But if I were to just start uh, plugging in numbers, let's slide this over here, I would have vy final, which is zero squared, is equal to vy initial 60.9 quantity squared minus two times 9.8 times y final minus my y initial, which is just zero. So uh, that is going to give me my uh, y final. And if I uh, set things up, then this should give me that my, um, my y final is equal to 189 meters. So um, notice that this was the uh, the height relative to my y0. So in fact, uh, what I should have set up here is that my y sub a is going to be equal to my uh, y final, which is 189 meters plus the 4.3 meters it was above the surface of the water, right? It's this distance plus that distance. Uh, so this gives me 193.3. Meters. Uh, so that gives me my, uh, this gives me my Y final. Now, uh, that gave us our maximum height above the water. Now we need to come back um, and look at things happening when it finally hits the water, and that's looking at point B. <clears throat> now, we know that this is occurring later in the motion, and so one way we could approach things is to say, okay, I know what's happening at point A, because I just solved for a bunch of information. Uh, I could, if I wanted to, go back and find out how far it's moved horizontally there. I know it's only moving horizontally up here, and so it would just have a speed of the 158.7, and then look at motion from there to there. But um, the object is in projectile motion during this entire time, and so I can just didn't even have to go to point A first before solving what's happening at point B. So I'm going to take this as my initial point and this as my final point. So let's draw a big line over here and now get into what's happening at point B. So again, I'm going to rewrite down all of my given information. My x0 still equal to 0. My y0 still equal to 0. Uh, my vx is still equal to 158.7. 
my VY initial is still equal to 60.9. Again, we're still at that starting point. Uh, my time is still unknown. That's one of the quantities we're trying to solve for. That's our flight time. Uh, I want to know the velocity with which it hits the water. And so my VY final is also going to be an unknown. And then uh, my X final is how far it goes. That is going to be an unknown. Uh, one thing I do know is that my Y final uh, is going to be equal to this negative 4.3 meters. Because uh, again, when we defined our coordinate system right up here, we said that this point was equal to zero, so it's going to end up at negative 4.3. So uh, now that we have this, we again have a series of known quantities. We know that, 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 and that, and we're trying to solve for the other ones. Um, and we've already written down uh, three of our equations uh, up here for the y direction, because uh, that's the direction in which we're accelerating. We had our position equation, our velocity equation, and our velocity displacement equation. We can add to that our position equation in the x direction, which is a lot simpler because we are not accelerating in that direction. And so our x position equation is just x final is equal to x zero plus vx times t. Now, uh, if we then go and look at all of these, and as you start to practice projectile motion problems, you'll notice that you know I have time in common with a lot of these. And if I want to compare what's happening in horizontal direction with the vertical direction, time is the one variable they have in common. And so if I want to find out how far it's going horizontally, uh, notice that I know my x0, I know my vx. The one piece of information I would need is the time. So here, I'm going to have to solve uh, for the time first. Uh, there is not really going to be a way uh, in order to sort of directly solve for this distance without first solving for the time. And so uh, to do that, we can go to our one of our other equations that involves time, uh, which is these first two. Notice now my VY final is an unknown, so this equation would have two unknowns, but my Y position equation uh, would only have one unknown, and that's time, because I know all of these other quantities. So my Y position equation, uh, Y final, which I said was negative 4.3, and I'll suppress units for a moment because I know I've got them all in the correct SI form. So slide this over a bit. Negative 4.3 is equal to my y0, which is 0, uh, plus my vy0, so plus 60.9 times t, um, then minus 1 half of 9.8 times t squared. So we have our uh, equation here. And notice time is the only variable in here, uh, but it is in fact a quadratic equation in time, which means that we can't just use regular algebra techniques to uh, slide things over and solve it. We instead have to do something else. So one option, if we uh, sort of start rearranging some of these terms, I can multiply 1 half and 9.8. I can take the 4.3 and slide it to the other side, that would give me negative 4.90t squared plus 60.9t plus 4.3 is equal to zero. Notice all of these positive and negative signs are very important. If we, if we mess it up, then things are going to go very, very bad. So this is a quadratic equation, uh, and you uh, might remember the quadratic formula that says that if I have an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, then my solutions, because every quadratic equation is going to have two solutions, is going to be x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. So having put this equation in that form, notice that a is negative 4.9, uh, b is equal to 60.9, c is equal to positive 4.3. Uh, so we could plug that in for both of them and solve the equations. 
And I guess if you want to do that, you're welcome to. Um, but if this is an equation, I need to get the answer to it. This isn't a math class. I don't care how you solve it. Um, so if you have uh, something on your fancy calculator that will solve it for you, uh, then go ahead and do that. Or you can probably download a program where you just punch in the coefficients and it gives you the answer. I am totally fine with that. Um, you don't do long division anymore. You don't need to do quadratic equation anymore. We have soulless calculating machines to do that for us. So that will also save time. So, um, so if I just plug these numbers into my calculator, it's gonna spit out two answers. Um, so now we do have to know some physics. The answers it spits out is gonna be one negative answer and one positive answer. And um, mathematically, both of these are allowed, but uh, since we're talking about the real world, um, then we're going to have to choose the positive solution. So in other words, our value of t we're going to use is 12 and a half seconds. That's 12 and a half seconds after it was fired. That's when it hits the water. So uh, having done that, we can go back to uh, either of our set of equations that involve time and start plugging that value in. So for example, in the x direction, I have x final is equal to x initial, which is zero, plus my vx, which is still 158.7, multiplied by 12.5. Again, this is in meters per second. This is in seconds. Seconds are gonna cancel out to give me my distance in meters. That's gonna be 1,984 meters, or about two kilometers, right? Pirates can fire uh, quite a distance away. Um, we already know where it lands, we know how long it takes. Uh, the last thing I want to know is what is our final velocity? And that's not just going to be uh, its velocity components. Uh, let's say I want to know the magnitude and direction of it hitting the water. So let's see if I can be focused here so you can uh, see everything here. Uh, in other words, I'm trying to find out uh, the moment right before it hits the water. Uh, its velocity vector is going to have some length, it's going to have some angle, and I want to solve for both of those. So let's slide this back down and hope my focus uh, stays the same. It looks like it did. Um, so if I look at my final velocity vector, I know that we're going to have a vx, and my vy final uh, should be pointing downwards, and we'll verify that in a moment. Um, so then v final it's going to look like that and we have some theta final uh, in essence what we're doing we were given the initial velocity in terms of a magnitude and direction we want to find the final velocity in terms of a magnitude and a direction so our vx is just going to be equal to what it started off with or 158.7 meters per second uh, for my vy final i'm going to use my velocity equation that was the one up here uh, vy0 minus g times t. So this is going to be 60.9 minus 9.80 multiplied by 12.5. And that is going to give me negative 61.6 meters per second. So in terms of components, if we just said we wanted to know the components of our final velocity vector, then we would be done. Because in terms of components, my V final is equal to 158.7 comma negative 61.6 meters per second. But let's say instead we wanted to know magnitude and direction. Well, the, my magnitude, since this is forming a right triangle of my V final, is just going to be equal to square root V x squared plus V y final squared. So uh, Pythagorize that. Um, so I have Vx, which is 158.7 squared plus negative 61.6 squared. Notice in squaring it, that uh, negative sign goes away. Uh, and this gives us 170.23. Uh, so it's slightly different from our initial velocity. Um, it speeds up a little bit, but not that much because it was already going really, really fast uh, and didn't actually drop that far. It only dropped the... Uh, the four meters there. Then if I wanted to know the angle, again, notice that 
uh, because my x component is positive, my y component is negative. I know this is going to be an angle below the horizontal. So uh, I can write it as a negative angle, uh, or if I really wanted to, we could sort of, you know, I could define it as uh, an angle counterclockwise. That would just be greater than 270 degrees. Uh, but for here, it's good enough to do this. Um, so if we use this same formula that we had before for our y components and our x components, the tangent of that angle, uh, and this is going off the uh, paper a bit, so let me slide this up. Um, the tangent of that angle is opposite over adjacent. Um, and in fact, here, if I leave this negative, the negative 61.6, and say my theta final is equal to the inverse tangent of negative 61.6 divided by 158.7, then my calculator is going to spit out that this is negative 21.2 degrees. Um, the fact that it's negative just means that this is at an angle that is below the horizontal. So if I take counterclockwise to be positive, a negative sign means it's going to be clockwise. So up here I'm at 21.2 uh, degrees below the horizontal. And my speed is 170 meters per second. So I am almost at 25 minutes. That's probably a long enough time for me to work through this problem. So I'm going to stop now.